The Scottsboro Boys were nine black teenage boys accused of rape in Alabama in 1931. The landmark set of legal cases from this incident dealt with racism and the right to a fair trial. This case included a frame-up, an all-white jury, rush trials, and attempted lynching and angry mob, and is an example of overall miscarriage of justice. On March 25, 1931, on the Southern Railway line between Memphis, nine black youth were hopping on a freight train with several white males and two white women. A fight, between, a fight began between the white and black groups near the Lookout Mountain Tunnel, and the whites were kicked off the train. The train was searched by a posse in Paint Rock, Alabama, where they were ordered to capture every Negro on the train. The posse arrested the black boys for assault. The boys arrested were Olin Montgomery, age 17, Clarence Norris, age 19, Haywood Patterson, age 18, Ozzie Powell, age 16, Willie Robinson, age 16, Charles Williams, age 16, Eugene Williams, age 13, and brothers Andy, age 19, and Roy, age 13. The case went to the United States Supreme Court on October 10, 1932, amidst tight security. The ILD retained Walter Polak to handle the appeal. Alabama Attorney General Thomas Knight, Jr. represented the state. Polak argued that the defendants had been denied due process first due to the mob atmosphere, second because of the strange attorney appointment and poor performance at trial. Last, he argued that African Americans were systematically excluded from jury duty contrary to the 14th Amendment. Knight countered that there had been no mob atmosphere at the trial and pointed to the finding by the Alabama Supreme Court that the trial had been fair and representation able. He told the court that he had no apologies to make. In a landmark decision, the United States Supreme Court reversed the convictions on the ground that the Due Process Clause of the United States Constitution guarantees the effective assistance of counsel at a criminal trial. The case went back to the United States Supreme Court for a second time as Norris v. Alabama. The court reversed the convictions for a second time on the basis that blacks had been excluded from the jury pool because of their race. Attorneys Samuel Lebowitz, Walter Heath Pollack, and Osman Frankel argued the case from February 15th to February 18th, 1935. Lebo, which showed the justices where the names of African Americans had been hurriedly ad added to the jury rolls. The justices examined the items closely with a magnifying glass. Thomas Knight maintained that the jury process was colorblind. On April 1, 1935, the United States Supreme Court sent the cases back a second time for retrials in Alabama. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created each other. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood i have a dream my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character i have a dream today. On July 24, 1937, the state of Alabama dropped all charges against Willie Robinson, Olee Montgomery, Eugene Williams, and Roy Wright. The four had spent over six years in prison, the adults on death row. After Alabama freed Roy, the Scottsboro Defense Committee took him on a national lecture tour. He joined the United States Army. Later, he married and joined the Merchant Marine 
After Wright came back from a lengthy time at sea in 1959, he thought his wife had been unfaithful. He shot and killed her before turning the gun on himself. On July 26, Haywood Patterson was sent to Edmore State Prison Farm, and all the remaining Scottsboro brothers were sent to Kelby Prison. Governor Graves had planned to pardon them in 1938, but was angered by their hostility and refusal to admit their guilt. He refused the pardon. Today, most residents of Scottsboro acknowledge the injustice that started in their community. In January 2004, the town dedicated a historical marker in the commemoration of the case at the Jackson County Courthouse. According to a news story, a 87-year-old black man who attended the ceremony recalled that the mob scene following the boy's arrest was frightened and that death threats were leveled against the jailed suspects. Speaking of the decision to install the marker, he said, I think it would bring the races closer together to understand each other better. Trouble.